Autoclave Engineers is dedicated to solving routine and difficult problems by offering precision engineered and manufactured premium quality products. This commitment to excellence has contributed to making Autoclave Fluid Components the world's largest supplier of high pressure valves, fittings, and tubing. Recognizing that any product must be assembled and installed properly in order to function efficiently, Autoclave presents this demonstration to show the correct procedure for coning and threading tubing for medium and high pressure valve and fitting connections of Autoclave's model AEGCTM2 coning and threading machine. The machine is designed for a volume production of coned and threaded tubing with repeatable quality and for larger sizes where hand tools are not available. The coning and threading machine can be used simultaneously to cone tubing on one end and thread tubing on the opposite end. The unit features an AC motor wired for either 110 or optional 220 volts. Turn the machine on. After several minutes you'll see oil flowing to both the coning portion and the threading portion. As with the manual tools, lubrication is essential. Do not cone or thread until oil flows from the tubes. An immersion heater is available to help maintain oil temperature if the machine is used in a cold environment. The procedure for determining the proper tube length is the same as previously described. Cut the tube to length with a hacksaw. Autoclave recommends safety glasses be worn at all times during the coning and threading operations. Now fit the tube holder assembly over the blade holder and thread it in place. Next, we'll install the collet nut assemblies into the collet nuts. To do this, simply place the collet nut over the collet and push together. It should snap into place. The collet and collet nut for the threading end of the machine assembles in the same way. Install the collet assembly on the machine. The machine is now ready to perform a coning operation. Place the feed chain on the feed wheel and turn on the machine. While waiting for the oil to circulate through the machine, insert the tube. For longer lengths, the tube should be supported to prevent side loading at the cutting tool. Push in the tube until it's just short of the coning blades. Be careful not to contact the coning blades. Tighten the collet nut finger tight and secure with a spanner wrench. Once the oil is flowing from the machine, remove the feed wheel chain and slowly feed the tubing into the machine. It's important to feed the tubing slowly so you do not put stress on the cutters or jam the cutters into the tubing. Note that every complete turn of the feed wheel removes 1 16th inch of material because the threads on the feed wheel are 1 16th inch pitch, 16 threads per inch. 1 inch medium pressure tubing requires approximately 3 16th inch cone. Notice where you start out on the threads and visualize 3 16th of an inch. When the tube reaches that point, you'll be able to feel the blades facing the end of the tubing. As you near the end of the procedure, you can feel the blades cutting deeper and it becomes more difficult to push the feed wheel. There is also a window where you can see the chips coming off the tubing. This indicates that you're about finished. After completing the basic portion of the coning operation, stop. Hold the tube in place for three to five revolutions of the cutting blades. This squares and finishes the coned end of the tubing. Then reverse the feed wheel until the tubing is disengaged from the cutting blades. Attach the chain to the feed wheel and if no one is using the threading end of the machine, turn it off. Take the spanner wrench and loosen the collet nut releasing the tubing from the collet. Remove the tubing and inspect the cone. There should be no score marks on the tube and it should be completely faced. Deburr the inside of the tube. The coning operation is now completed. For proper thread length, first rotate the tube stop forward towards the die head. Insert the tube and slide it through the collet until it touches the tube stop. Turn the collet nut finger tight, then rotate the tube stop back to its original position. Then, using a spanner wrench, tighten the collet nut. Lock the die head closed by pulling forward on the two handles located on the die head trip yoke. Slide the collet assembly with tube forward carefully until the cone of the tube touches the die chasers. The next step is to set the desired thread length. Adjusting the spacer head assembly to the proper distance sets thread length. The distance required for the different tubing sizes are shown in the L column in Table 4. Using the appropriate collar, a preliminary distance can be set. Correct length allows one and one-half threads to show above the collar.
Now, push the tubing assembly forward carefully until it touches the chasers. Squeeze the two handles on each side of the trip yoke and tube assembly together to feed the tube into the chaser until you see the threads cutting. Once all four die chasers are cutting, release the tube and it will feed itself. When the cutting is complete, the yoke will release freeing the tubing. Turn off the machine and clean the burrs out of the die head assembly preventing damage when the yoke is pulled forward. Loosen the collet nut and remove the tube. Screw a collar onto the tubing to check for proper thread length and depth. Again, there should be one and a half threads showing above the collar and the collar should screw on easily. If these parameters are not met, adjust the machine and thread a new piece of tubing. Never re-thread tubing. As you can see, this piece of tubing is properly threaded. The machine is now ready to produce one inch coned and threaded tubing. Remember, you're working with the world's finest quality high pressure valves fitting in tubing by Autoclave Engineers Fluid Components. Accurately coned and threaded tubing is an important element in maximizing the efficiency and safety of these valves. We hope this video helps you in the makeup of low, medium, and high pressure valve and fitting connections.